I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and on today's episode, it's cold. <laughs> it's what we'd call taters, isn't it, Tim? It's very taters. Taters, just above freezing. But it's exciting day for us because it's a first test track day for this monster. <laughs> Let's get into it. So, what is the plan today? Well, we've got a little bit more bodywork on it now, but as you can see, it ain't finished yet. Uh, we've got to widen the wings, and that's in progress at the moment. Um, the front clip is off and that's getting widened as well, uh, just to fit these wheels and tyres on. So today's testing isn't really going to be full on track, you know, testing at the limit. All we're going to do now is little steps forward with developing this car. So today is all going to be about seeing, about getting some temperature into the batteries, the motor, getting it above like 20 miles an hour and you know more than just ragging it around in the car park which is what we've done so far maybe do a 0 to 60 test and just give it a little bit of beans really i can't give the brakes much of a test because we're still waiting on the correct calipers for the rear to get that brake balance right so braking is not going to be a huge thing today suspension wise we're still waiting for the proper suspension as well so handling we're not really going to be testing so it's mainly going to be about getting everything up to temperature seeing what it's like uh, to, in acceleration and as i say maybe a little sneaky north to 60. i don't think that's going to be a problem today is it tim i hope not <laughs> maybe it depends how loud i scream depends how loud the tires are <laughs> So, where have we brought Bug Zapper to? Well, we've brought it to the Electric Classic Cars secret test track, a few miles off the A38 near Litchfield. It's called Kerbera, and it's a sprint track. Now, a sprint track is not your full-on Brands Hatch or Silverstone. It's a small little test track, ideal for what we want to do today, which is just uh, some initial testing. And it's a very simple course. It's just got a couple of bends, it's like the letter B with a nice long straight where we can go accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake to get some temperature in the systems and see if everything is good and see if I can drive. Right, we're ready. Uh, Ben's even lent me his heated gloves, luxury, because there's no heating in this, there's not even any doors. So I'm ready for the first run. Ben's done the temperatures and yeah I'm going to switch the car on now the first thing you'll hear is the fans because we've got the fans for the battery radiator on permanently the ones for the motor are obviously thermostatically controlled but I think because it's going to be mainly the batteries that are going to limit the power getting hot we have put the fans on all the time so if I switch it on here now that's what you can hear so I'm just quickly going to do a change because uh, I want to put the regenerative braking up. At the moment it's literally zero, which is what we're probably going to do at Pike's Peak. But I want to do battery temperature testing more uh, today, which means that on a cold day like this, you're going to struggle to get that temperature up in the battery, especially on a short course like this. So one way to artificially sort of like get it to increase the battery temperature is to put the regenerative braking effect up. And that doesn't give the battery a break because it's always under load when you're throttling it or you're braking it whether or not the energy is going out of the battery or into the battery the battery's always under load so i'm going to just change the settings here now and the current is 23 percent so i think i'll put that up to 60 percent 
and that should help us get a bit more temperature into those cells because that's the main thing I want to do today is how efficient the thermal management system is on the batteries. So that's that done, let's try it again. Well, the motors might be quiet, but the brakes aren't. <laughs> they squeak a bit. Right, that's the first little bit of tentative testing over. I did about 10 laps there. Um, first thing of note is the power steering is a little bit flaky. It's not as predictable as I want it to be. So there's a uh, sensor which we are sending speed signals to the um, power steering controller I think those um, speed signals are wrong because at low speeds it's fine but just above low speeds around about 10 miles an hour so for hairpins it started to reduce the assist too much because then it's quite stiff to get it around the hairpin so I think we just need to bump that up a little bit to increase the assist uh, for a little bit higher speeds and that will be that so a little bit of tuning there to do um, but so far so good so I think there's a little issue with one of the battery management system um, monitors as well. So we're going to do a little bit of investigations into that. But I think I know what that is. That's a that's a minor um, problem. But yeah, I just want to do a little bit of a nut and bolt check now because we've this is the first time we've had it out and about um, properly at any decent speed. So we'll do a little bit of a nut and bolt check, check temperatures, and then we'll go out for a bit more playing. Right, so the first thing we need to do is just take some readings and get some baseline of things like temperatures mainly of the cells. Now I've got a gauge on the dashboard that tells me the highest um, cell temperature of each pack. But what Ben is doing right now, he's communicating directly to the battery management systems and he's going to get more detailed temperatures of the individual battery modules, if you like, uh, in the pack. And how many... Um, temperature sensors are that per uh, module two per battery module two so we've got six in there so it's going to be 12 temperature readings per pack so we can get a little bit more granularity on the temperature of those batteries so what we're going to be looking for today is how much the temperature is increasing and where it's increasing for instance is the rear pack going to be getting hotter than the side packs and within those packs again which battery modules uh, getting more warm or hotter than others just just to check that our thermal management the cooling plates if you like are working how they should it is the first battery getting hotter than the last battery etc etc so what we what's the initial temperatures uh well the initial temperatures we started at were uh sixes and sevens so seven was the highest which was only in the rear box there we had uh four four of the thermistors so two modules were Okay. Up at seven so degrees we're, and we're rest down six. We're starting at six and seven degrees uh, on 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 average, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, okay, so we take some screenshots of that. So we're going to do our first run now, and you know, throughout the day, we, this is the main thing we're going to be concentrating on. See how the thermal management of the battery is, and also the motors as well. But I really think it's the batteries we need to be keeping an eye on because that's going to be the limiting factor at Pike's Peak is the battery temperature. Right, I've had my first little run there, but while I warm up, Tony's warming up by doing some work because we're doing it. <laughs> do some work, Tony. <laughs> He's doing a nut and bolt check because this is the first time we've had it up to any decent speed and over bumps and things like that. So we're just checking all the major uh, suspension, wheel, nuts and bolts to make sure that it, everything's still tight. Important thing to do because I don't want any wheels falling off or suspension dropping off. So that's what Tony's up to now. And once he's done that, time to go out for some more fun. Right, now just before we break for lunch, I'm going to do a couple of 0 to 60 runs because I know everybody out there wants me to do one. And there's no 
relevant at all to racing, but you know, let's do it, let's see what it is. Started to drizzle a little bit as well, so uh, but we'll see what happens. Right then, first ever 0 to 60 run in Bug Zapper. Here we go. Right, I've got the draggy over to my left here, I've got my app on my phone down here, and it's drizzling, and we're about half battery pack, so let's we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, that was 3.5 seconds with loads of wheel spin and uh, yeah, no traction. But let's see, I'm going to do like maybe three or four and see what the best one is. Right, so let's have a quick look here. Um, so I did about five runs then, uh, no tracks whatsoever, tyres are cold, drizzle, so you can tell I'm excuses, excuses, usual race car excuses. Uh, what's the fastest we did here? So uh, there's a 3.1 there, uh, 3.05, uh, 3.5, that's the fastest one uh 3.03 that was a quick one there so basically three 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 seconds dead is the current 0 to 60 which sets a benchmark uh, it's less than half battery pack so we'll see on a a warmer day with stickier tires stickier track and a full battery pack how much that can get improved by a lot i think so we're well into the twos uh when we've got a bit more traction right I think that's enough fun for one day. Uh, yeah, that works is the conclusion of today. We've achieved what we wanted to do, which is essentially just get things up to temperature, see what it's like in a straight line, um, lessons learned. Um, power steering definitely needs adjustment because I was finding in the very slow corners, it was working okay. As soon as you get up to higher speed corners, it's as if it's actually not just switched off for fighting against you. So it, was, it is impossible to go around the slightly higher speed corners and high speed corners, which there isn't any really here, I would dread to think. So I think what I'll do is we'll get some kind of like adjustment knob type system to be able to just fine tune that a little bit more on the next session. So that's number one. Um, number two, um, I found there's a little bit of a leak underneath. Um, I think Tony thinks that's a oil seal on the input shaft, so I've got to sort that out. Um, and then I think the next test session, we'll have the rear brake calipers on there, so we'll be able to test braking and um, hopefully the suspension. But today, it was all about thermal management. Are the radiators big enough for the battery and the motors? And we've been ragging it a number of times full throttle on the uh, straight and the battery temperature has got up to maximum 25 degrees celsius which is absolutely fine so i think we're good on that motor temperature got up to 30 which again is hardly anything so thermal management so far is looking good but as everybody tells me regarding pike, pike speak you've got a double if not triple your thermal management so we may still go up on that but so far things are looking good. So I think that's it for our first test session. I'm still alive. Tim hasn't found an ambulance, so I'd call that a successful day, Tim. It'll be successful when we're a bit warmer. Yeah, so hopefully next time it's not sub-zero. Um, right, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.